Coming up on Before You Buy, a new camera, the Apple TV, the fuel band, an inexpensive Android phone, and a pair of speakers with no wires. It's all coming up next on Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage using your own computer and printer whenever you need it. You never have to go to the post office again. For a special $110 bonus offer, including $55 free postage, go to Stamps.com today and use the offer code before you buy. Hey, Leo Laporte here. It's time for Before You Buy, our uh, Twit in-house product review show. What we do is we get new products into the Twit Brickhouse, and we've got a lot of them all the time. And then we ask our various Twit staffers to review them. It's a chance for you to see them and for them to see some new products and for you to get a good idea about uh, what you want to uh, buy or, in, in this case, sometimes not buy. Every one of our products we review in one of three categories, buy, try, or Stay away from. Do not buy. Let's uh, let's kick things off uh, with uh, Tom Merritt, and he's going to review. We fought. Tom and I fought over this because I got one too. The brand new Apple TV. Tom. Hey, I'm Tom Merritt, taking a look at the new Apple TV, which is very similar to the old Apple TV. In fact, the only difference is the A5 processor inside, which gives it the ability to play 1080p video. Done. That's the review. No, I'm just kidding. All the other differences are from the software update, which you can also get on the previous generation of Apple TV. But let's run through some of those unfamiliar with the Apple TV. It's got a hockey puck design, minimal ports, proprietary power, but it hooks up nice and simple. And the new interface is more iOS looking. Check this out. You get a screen full of apps. Now, it also means that you can't move these apps around. You're pretty much stuck flicking from one to the other. Think of it like the iPhone first generation. Uh, you get the apps you get and they stay right where they are. Sorry, no moving, no app store. You're pretty much locked into the Apple universe here too. Uh, if you don't have Netflix or one of these other services like YouTube or MLB TV uh, that you wanna watch, as before, it can stream your videos from other iTunes computers on the network. You do need an internet connection to make anything work. Unlike the old Apple TV, this one is all about streaming. You can also rent and now buy movies and TV shows and even access previously purchased items with some exceptions. I'm looking at you, HBO. Of course, if you share an account, it's rather difficult to switch from one to another, so choose wisely who gets to set up the device or you may receive odd emails that your spouse has rented the remake of Footloose. And of course, if you haven't experienced AirPlay before, you can sling videos and select apps from your iOS device to the big screen. Nifty for home videos. So to recap, the pros, simple setup, easy to understand interface, can access previously purchased content. AirPlay works great and looks great. On the con side, you're locked into the Apple universe. There's no app store. You have to be connected to the internet and it's hard to move between accounts. The thing about these video devices is they're all about the content. And because you're locked into Apple TV and because you're limited on what kind of apps, I'm tempted to say don't buy. But if you're somebody who only cares about the television shows that are available in the Apple Store or through Netflix or on YouTube, and maybe you only like the NBA for sports, this might be the perfect device for you. So I'm going to say try, or at least use it as a supplemental device to your current television options. That's Before You Buy. I'm Tom Merritt. You can catch Tom Merritt each and every weekday uh, with Tech News Today, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on twit.tv. He also hosts a bunch of other shows, including Frame Rate and Sword and Laser with Veronica Belmont. Now, another TNT host, Sarah Lane, my compadre on iPad today as well. Uh, Sarah was at South by Southwest where Nike was handing out the hot fuel band. Notice I I'm not wearing one. You could barely find them. <laughs> They're sold out all the time on the Nike website. We'll uh, find out why Sarah has a review of the Fuel Band. Hey everybody, Sarah Lane from Twit with a really cool watch. I wanted to show you guys my cool watch. It's 12.25 p.m. right now. 
but actually it's more than a watch. This is the Nike Plus Fuel Band um, that I've been hanging out with for almost a month now, which is not just a watch, but it's also a measure of my exercise activity. And you can see there's a, there's a number here called Fuel. As you can see underneath, it's almost like a little rainbow thing going on. What I want to do is get to 3,000. There's a little green dot that indicates how much farther I have to go. I'm, I'm more than halfway through, and it's only just after noon, so I'm on track to make my goal. Now, what does this mean? So fuel is an aggregate of things like how many calories you've burned. I've burned this many. Mm, I could probably go to the gym after work. That's not too, too aggressive. How many steps have I taken today? That's amazing. Okay, well, I'm doing pretty good there. So you get the idea, and then you go back to time. So this little single button um, pretty much just uh, shuffles through all of, these, all of these options that I have. So the idea is, if I'm 5'1", about 105 pounds, and I'm 35-year-old woman, the amount of calories that I'm going to uh, you know, expend throughout the day is less than someone who's a lot taller than me and maybe weighs more. But that doesn't mean that I'm not working as hard. So the fuel number, which is sort of the master number throughout a day, is an aggregate of how many steps I took, but then all of these factors that are unique to me. Now, what does this mean? Well, I can track my progress over days, weeks, months, etc. Nike has a really cool uh, free app um, that uh, I can sync my fuel band with. Now, many of you might remember the Jawbone Up of months past. It was really cool back in November of 2011. It didn't wirelessly sync and that was a real sticking point I had with it. So if I want to wirelessly sync with my app to make sure that my app is up to date with my activity, I just go ahead and hold down this button and then it tells me it's syncing. Okay. So I see sync. I have to have my app open here and it will say, okay, syncing my activity data here. So this is my synced app view. It shows how much fuel I've gotten to today. Then I click on the activity tab. It shows a graph of my activity and when I peaked. I can look at a week view, which is almost more helpful. This week view is, is nice because anything that's green means that I reached my goal. My goal again is 3,000 as far as fuel goes. I've got a little bit more work to do today. In my friends area, this will compare me to all of my friends, Facebook friends, at least at this point, that's who I'm connected to. So I can say, wow, well, I'm doing pretty good, but Markar and Daria are doing better than me. That makes me want to exercise a little bit more because I'm competing with them. So there's a little incentive there. And then you've got a general area where you get little, uh, little badges for, let's say, your best day ever. You got more points than you'd ever gotten before, longest streak of meeting your fuel goals, et cetera, et cetera. Now, why is my fuel at 3,000? Because I set it at 3,000. This is actually a, you know, a, a self-imposed goal because I know that if I do pretty good, if I'm being pretty active, I go to the gym, I walk around a lot, I take the stairs, I'll get there. But if I'm not very mobile and I spend a lot of time sitting around and I don't get out and about, I'm not going to make it. This is something that I can change in my settings, uh, in, in my fuel band settings, and then I just sync my band to the settings. I'm wearing a small band because I have small wrists, but they come in, a, I think, a few different sizes. The pros are this thing is very comfortable. It's water resistant, so I don't really have to worry about taking it on and off. Wireless sync is huge. I have not had that in devices in the past that did similar things to the fuel band. And it just looks cool. I mean, I've got this handy dandy watch that has all this color and tells me how many calories and steps I've taken. Awesome. I love it. Couple of cons. Number one, it relies on the movement of your arms. So if you're sitting at a stationary bike and your legs are going crazy and you're burning tons of calories, this guy is not going to reflect that. Believe me, I know. I have tried. Some people say, well, you could, you could clip it onto the shoelaces of your shoe, that sort of thing. I guess you could do that, but as far as I'm concerned, that's not really a solution. That's something they need to take into consideration. Also, and I know this sounds weird, but the battery life is so good, I'm getting between four to six days on just one charge that I end up forgetting, and then I run out of batteries at somewhat inopportune times. So small cons, but they are there. In closing, I would absolutely buy this. If you are a fitness fanatic or even somebody who just likes stats, you want to know how many steps you took in a given day, this is a great little toy. The software is good. I really like the app. I think it's a buy. Hey, before we go on, I'd like to talk a little bit about one of my favorite sponsors on the show. Somebody I've been, you know, almost all our sponsors I've been working with for a long time. And Stamps.com I've been using for eight or nine years now. You see, Stamps.com means I don't have to go to the post office anymore. It lets me print 
completely legally, yes, I should mention that, U.S. postage. I think, you know, sometimes people's reaction is, what, you can print U.S. postage from your computer with your printer? How does that work? Stamps.com is how. On a Mac or a PC, they've got a great USB scale. You plug that into your computer to drop any letter, package, even a postcard, anything onto that scale. It tells you exactly what postage. The rates are always up to date because it uses online tables. And then it prints the postage and you can mail it. In fact, you don't even have to get up to go to the post office. The mail carrier will come and pick it up. You just call them or on their regular schedule and they take it away. Packages of any size. Uh, international mailing. In fact, it prints out the forms for you. It does it everything uh, just right. If you're an eBay seller, this is a boon for you. You've got to use stamps.com. Now, I've got a special no-risk trial offer I want you to check out. Now, when you go to stamps.com, you'll see an $80 bonus offer. Don't do that. Don't do that. I want you to click that radio microphone in the upper right-hand corner there and enter the offer code before you buy, all one word, before you buy. That'll turn that $80 offer into a $110 no-risk trial. It includes $55 free postage, the USB scale I mentioned, uh, a month's trial of uh, stamps.com, $55 free postage, and all you pay is the shipping and handling. you got to try this. Go to the website, stamps.com, click the radio microphone, use the offer code before you buy. It'll save you money every month. It even has discounts that they can't offer at the post office on priority mail, express mail, things like that. Never go to the post office again. Use your own computer, your own printer, no special links, no postage meter necessary. Get rid of that postage meter. Stamps.com. Click the radio microphone. Use the offer code before you buy. All right, we've taken a look at a couple of products. Uh, Tom and Sarah had the, their chances. Now we're going to do our mini reviews. Uh, these are quick little reviews of products, uh, starting off with our camera guy, Tony Wang. He seems to get every camera, right? He's very excited about photography. He's a very good photographer, so he's a great guy to review. This new Panasonic Lumix with a 16x optical zoom, the ZS15. Tony, take it away. I'm Tony from Twit, and today I'm reviewing the Panasonic ZS15. It is a point-and-shoe camera with very, very impressive 16x optical zoom. And that's the equivalent of 24mm to 384mm. And even more impressive is actually when you're recording video, you're actually recording at 27mm to 432mm and it is actually priced just under $280. The f-stop actually ranges from 3.3 to 5.9 depending on your zoom. You get a whole range of shooting modes from aperture priority to shutter priority to full manual and you can actually have two customized settings as well. One of my favorite features on the camera is actually when you're zooming in it tells you what your minimum focus and distance is when you're zooming and in full optical zoom your minimum focus and distance is 6.6 .6 feet. The intelligent ISO works really well and it's actually very intelligent. The camera actually has 70 megabyte built-in memory so you can actually shoot right out of the box. You can record video at 1080 at 30 frames per second and 720 at 30 or 60. The power OIS or optical image stabilization is actually very 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 impressive. I was able to shoot full zoom, low light, with very, very little image blur. Well, my favorite feature of this camera is that you can charge straight from the AV out port and you don't need to have external charger. So you don't never have to take your battery out to charge it. Um, it comes with a cable and you just plug it straight into the wall. Pros and cons, um, this camera has really good optical zoom. Uh, there's minimal distortion. The built-in memory is really a lifesaver when you forget to bring your memory card, which happens to me all the time. I have no con. There is no call for this camera. Buy, try, or don't buy, this is definitely a buy for me if you're looking for a point issue with very powerful optical zoom. I'm Tony for Twit, and this is the Panasonic ZS15. I'm Nicole Lee from Twit and Before You Buy, and this is my review of the ZTE Fury, an entry-level Android phone from Sprint. Now, the name ZTE Fury kind of implies a fast and furious, kind of an angry-looking phone. But I have to say, the ZTE Fury is quite the opposite. In fact, it's quite calm and serene looking. Um, it's a, it has a very typical run-of-the-mill um, Android phone design. As you can see, it's sort of curved corners, very simple, compact, lightweight, quite slim as well. On the side here, you used to do see a little bit of a chrome trim. On the back here is a nice uh, rubberized finish. 
on the back sort of tiny little polka dots for just a little bit extra grip. On the side, you do get the volume rocker as well as the micro USB port. Beneath the display, you do get the usual uh, four Android hotkeys like the home, menu, back, and search functions. On this side, you get the camera button, and on the top, you get um, the screen lock key as well as the headset jack. On the back of the phone is the uh, 5 megapixel camera and LED flash. The ZTE Furies display is a 3.5 inch um, capacitive touch HVGA resolution display. Now, I'm not entirely a big fan of HVGA displays just because I do think it's a little bit fuzzy. And um, just scrolling around the navigation screen and so forth, I did find it to be a little bit um, jag, a little bit unresponsive at times. This might depend on what applications you're running in the background, of course. Now, the ZTE Fury ships with Android 2.3 Gingerbread, which is not the latest ice cream sandwich. But I do forgive it um, just because it is an entry-level phone. And uh, I don't think everyone needs ice cream sandwich if you're looking to save a little bit of money. So I think it's fine for now. The ZTE Fury has the usual Android features, you know, Gmail, Google Maps, and all of that. It has a few Sprint bloatware applications like Sprint Zone and uh, Sprint ID and Ringtone, the usual Sprint bloatware apps. But I have to say the UI itself is not very cluttered. Uh, there's no specific skin like an HTC Sense or a Samsung TouchWiz. This is just pretty vanilla Android except for a few Sprint apps here and there. One aspect of the software that I did not like was Sprint ID. Sprint ID is essentially Sprint's way of letting you customize your Android phone with a variety of quote unquote ID packs. So there are like sort of AOL ID packs and uh, entertainment packs. And what these do essentially pre-install or install a whole slew of applications and games and wallpapers and different style of launcher apps just to customize the look of uh, your phone. Now, what I don't like about the, these ID packs is that when you install a particular pack, it goes ahead and installs dozens of apps and a bunch of, bunch of wallpapers that you might not necessarily want. And if you want to uninstall a pack, you can do that. But those applications that you installed will still remain. You have to sort of manually uninstall them by hand. The ZTE Fury comes with um, 512 megabytes of RAM and 4 gigabytes of uh, ROM. Uh, it does also have a micro SD card slot on the back if you want to input more memory. In fact, the ZTE Fury comes with 2 gigabytes micro SD card pre-installed. As for the camera, I have to say for an entry-level phone, the camera was not too bad. There is a very slow shutter response time. That's true. But the quality itself, it's okay. And much better than I expected for a $20 phone. For those who are into video calls, however, do note that the phone does not have a front-facing camera. The ZTE Fury ships with a 1 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, which makes it quite zippy from time to time. We could launch applications quite quickly. The ZTE Fury has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, as well as connectivity with um, Sprint's 3G service. Now for the pros and cons of the ZTE Fury. The pros are that it's compact and lightweight. It's only $20 of a new two-year service agreement, which is quite inexpensive for a phone that has a 1 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor and a decent 5 megapixel camera. The cons of the phone is that the screen resolution can be a little bit fuzzy and the Sprint ID package is not my favorite. As for buy, try, or don't buy, since it's only $20 with a new two-year service agreement, I think it's a buy, especially for those who are on a budget or for families who want to give like a cheap Android phone for kids. I'm Nicole Lee, and this has been my review of the ZTE Fury. That's Tony Wang, one of our uh, crack editors. Uh, in fact, one of my earliest employees here at the uh, Twit Brick House. And uh, one of our newest employees, Nicole Lee, who's been reviewing cell phones for a long time for uh, CBS and now is part of our team. In fact, produces this show uh, and really liked this. Uh, it's nice to have an inexpensive Android phone that other people uh, can try out. If you want to see the full reviews of both the Panasonic Lumix and this uh, Android ZTE Fury, you can go to our uh, Before You Buy 
channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash twit. And the uh, reviews of all of our products are up there. Uh, but that's a good way to get the full review of the uh, Lumix and the Fury. All right, moving along. It's my turn. I get the uh, the next review. Let me move some stuff out of the way here so I can show you uh, this little baby. Logitech recently bought, you know, the headphones I'm wearing are called Ultimate Ears. They're in-ear molded headphones. A lot of rock and roll superstars wear Ultimate Ears. They're very popular, very expensive headphones. Logitech, I guess, recently bought the Ultimate Ears brand, and now they're making Ultimate Ears devices. This is one of the first. This is an AirPlay docking station. Let me pull that in so you get the really smooth, streamlined look of this. Uh, the idea is, and it's got uh, on top, it's got on and off controls, a volume control. Uh, on the back, it's got an Ethernet uh, jack and an auxiliary in jack. But it also has, and this pops out, a 30-pin connector point that works with both an iPad or an iPhone. Now, that's kind of nice because it will charge. It is uh, completely compatible with the iPhone and the iPad. But most of the time, you won't even use it. So let's just slide that back in. Because as you might have noticed, this I, I mentioned the word AirPlay. This supports AirPlay. So when you first, to set this up is really easy. You dock your iOS device, iPhone or iPad, uh, a, 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 onto the, the docking port here. The speaker recognizes it and immediately launches the app marketplace so that you can download the special Logitech UE Air app right here. Once this app is installed, it will configure automatically the uh, Air to use your Wi-Fi. Now, you do have to have Wi-Fi to use the AirPlay feature, as always, because that's how AirPlay works. Once you've configured that, then you can play music on an iOS device. In fact, your friends come over, they can play music as long as they join your Wi-Fi network on their iOS devices. You can even DJ back and forth. Here, I'll, I'll pull up some music on here, and you can see uh, you can see how this sounds. So, yeah, let's let's do this to there. So, here's my uh, here's my iTunes uh, playlist, um, and I'll just uh, I'll start this song going. Now, when you start something on on uh, the iOS device, you can choose your AirPlay device up here in the upper right hand corner. I've chosen the Logitech UE Air speakers. Once they're paired, these will pay, play right through the uh, speakers. Wow! And we got some we got some bass. These are ported speakers, so they do have a good bass sound here. But I have to say, there are other AirPlay docking stations from Bose, from Bowers and Wilkins, the Zeppelin, uh, that also look pretty. Don't require wires and uh, frankly sound a little bit better. These are a little bit thin. I'm not crazy about the sound on these speakers. And for $400, I think they should probably sound a little bit better. There's a lot of convenience in having an AirPlay speaker system. You don't have to dock your phone or your iPad uh, or your iPod. If you support, if, it, if the iPod Touch supports AirPlay and you're on a Wi-Fi network, you can just play over the network. And that works pretty well. These are bad, I have to say. I mean... It's getting me dancing. I think what I, I would recommend is it's not a clear-cut buy because the price is so high at $400. Uh, and there are other devices that are a comparable price, but perhaps a little bit better sound. I say go in and try these and listen before you buy. If you like the sound, the convenience is fantastic, and these do work very well, exactly as advertised. Works with all uh, devices that support AirPlay. Uh, all the most recent uh, iOS devices. Uh, it, it, these are the Logitech UA, I'm sorry, UE Ultimate Ears Air uh, speakers, $399.99. I'm going to give it a solid try before you buy. Well, that's it. We'll turn a little, turn our base, that's a dead mouse, I guess that is, down there a little bit. And uh, thank you for joining us. We do this show uh, Thursdays. If you'd like to stop by and watch us do it live, we usually have a lot of fun doing it. 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time on twit.tv right after Dr. Kiki's Science Hour. Um, you can, of course, download both audio and video of the show every week at twit.tv. And uh, if you've got some suggestions for things you'd like to see, don't forget, you can always, always e email us before you buy at twit.tv and let us know what you'd like to see uh, next. Um, Thanks to Nicole Lee, our producer. Thanks to you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Remember, you got to watch before you buy. Hey, hey, young people. 
I don't know how you do it with the raves all night. Young people. I don't know how you do it with the raves all night. <laughs> <laughs> 